Welcome, welcome everyone to the 504. I'm your host, Wiz. Today, we're going to play Royal Leadership Chess. This chess is so royally leadershiping, I cannot wait to share it with you. Now, I got to give you the caveat. I came up with these rules. A lot of the variants we play on this show have been sent to me by some of our, where am I, viewers, but unfortunately not this time the reality's leaking hold on a sec there we go this time it's all me so it's my fault if it's kind of bombs but i am really looking forward to trying this out so let me share the rules with you i've got them in this game notepad.exe let's bring this on screen here rooks knights and bishops that's basically your pieces you know not your pawns your pieces they may only move to squares adjacent to their own king or queen now their own means the piece of the same color so your knight can move next to your king or queen and adjacency is like where a king moves so it's orthogonal or diagonal just has to be touching in one of those directions so if you're watching live right now you can click the link in the chat and join this game we are going to play royal leadership chess now the way i imagine this chess game going at first is that like we flock our pieces towards our king and queen and then we realize the king and queen don't have to obey this rule so suddenly the queen goes on a rampage i mean imagine like queen h5 queen goes across queen can take h7 nothing can recapture it because if an old queen takes h8 you could just murder the other side of the chessboard which sounds kind of fun because he can't stop you i mean his pieces can't move they can only move next to his own king or queen so once we realize that which is kind of right now the game's going to be a lot different the other thing is pawns they don't have to follow that rule either so you can also have a nice game of pawns for about three moves until the pawns can't move anymore then it's back to the queens so anyway i'm excited to try this if anyone clicks the link now unfortunately for us chess tv isn't that popular i don't know how to explain that except to say it is nose smashingly unpopular So we don't really have any opponents right now. So I guess this has become a talk show. Let's talk about chess. So chess really reflects reality, if you know what I mean. Because in my life, everybody takes turns. And when I win, other people lose. Um, oh, chess is actually a lot different from life, isn't it? That's very interesting. Um, we, <laughs> we're going to, since we don't have an opponent, we're going to do something insane here, which is just go play this variant against Igle Royale. Okay, now if he's watching the chat, he will know that the rule is such. However, <laughs> he's not watching the chat. He is thinking he's playing chess. So let's get some pawns out here and then let's move the queen so that we actually, so trades might be good here. Okay, so we're actually following these rules and he is not. So we're going to get screwed, but it might take a while because who knows, uh, screwing doesn't happen every day quickly. Sometimes you get screwed slow, slowly. That's just the way things work sometimes. Okay, so the queen, I moved the queen up so that I could develop some pieces, but now I can't develop any pieces. Maybe I can do this. Okay, that's good. Uh, then I can get everything out here again. So he doesn't know I'm playing by these rules, but I am. And as you can see, I'm doing pretty well considering the restraints. I still have uh, my things moving. And now I don't want to lose my queen, of course. That would be really bad. But if I could just keep trading then rooks will be the last pieces with the restrictions. I played g4 here so that I could bring the knight in and offer more trades, because think about it. Knights are pretty bad when they can't move. But look at this. If you don't have any knights, then they can move again. So the other the other advantage I have is that he has no idea I'm playing by these rules, so he's not going to take this rook, because uh, he doesn't know that I'm playing by those rules. See, So that's, that's, that's great, um, in a way. Uh, I guess this move, maybe we can produce something over here. Besides children, it's uh, it's no longer an honor to produce children. It's simply too easy. Okay, I don't want to trade queens. That's for sure. <laughs> then I'll have nothing, no, no, nowhere's house to move any of my stuff. So let's let's just close this up. Why not? Pawns don't have to follow that rule. So I think it's pretty remarkable how chess-like this game has been, considering the constraints. Don't you think? Yes, you do. You do think so. So he has now done this clever pin thing, and I am. Uh, somewhat problematicalized by it. But this seems to be a pretty good way to undo it. Not only is it a square covered by my queen, but now I can take his knight for free. So I seem to be winning a piece. My play has gone shockingly well, considering that this is a rated bullet game. I think I've done pretty well. Now maybe I'll need to cheat here at the end just to demonstrate that rating really matters to me. What if I go this way? Because then, then I can kind of use my king to help defend um because i can move next to my king see so <laughs> that can help me to maneuver my pieces into legal squares now i have a problem <laughs> the knight can only go here according to the rules 
So that's somewhat problematic. But uh, now the knight uh, can go here. This is actually getting quite restrictive, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> and I'm running a bit low on time as well. This is getting kind of bad, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I need to get some chess moves made that are really good. I can move here. Oh, I'm out of time. And he's threatening checkmate. Lucky for me, I'm out of time because he does have this deadly checkmate. And I actually, in a chess game, can't win this either. So I hope you've seen now how restrictive this is. It's remarkable, I think, that we played a somewhat normal chess game. I don't think queen d3 here is a great move, but it allowed me to develop my pieces. And then we kind of traded. I was hoping we could trade all of the minor pieces. If I could just trade these last knights and maybe trade the rooks, then we're playing chess. So then I'd be okay. And actually, maybe f4 is a mistake. f5, I mean here. Uh, I, th I think it's nice taking this extra space, but it, my center fell apart after c5. This is a really, really good move, striking the base of my pawn chain and striking the center. It makes this pawn quite unstable. So if I could have maybe played f4, let's see how this went here. So I moved the queen over. I In chess, maybe the trade would be better, but we weren't playing chess. So here, maybe I should just take, because these are double pawns. I can undouble the pawns, um, and then I fall into this trap where I win a piece. So if it weren't for the restrictions, I think I could win with the extra piece. Oh, whatever. Um, that's in the past now. We've completely forgotten that that ever happened. So moving on. My rating is somewhat affected, but <laughs> that will also recover. Your rating actually drifts towards your actual skill. So I know this sounds weird uh, because I'm a weird guy, but your rating doesn't matter because it will move toward your actual strength. If you could never see your rating, never see your rating, it would be somewhat similar to obsessing over it somewhat similar. Now, of course, if you're obsessing, you avoid certain situations that cause your rating to go down, such as actually playing rated games. But other than that, there's not a lot of impact. Mm. So now we're playing against Bisonov. I wonder if he's a real Russian bison or not. Bisonov. He's a chess player, as you can see. He's watching the stream right now. Hello to Bisonov. I'm glad you're joining us. He says he will try. So let's try. So what I'm going to try is this. I'm going to try to do this. Like I was talking about, like, look at this brutal attack. Is he, gonna, he has one minute to figure out how to defend against the Mad Queen Rampage. Rampage. Look at this. It's going to be just so destructive. I mean, he can't even stop me. I don't know what he's going to do. So what he should do, of course, is just resign. He should just resign. I think that E5 is a terrible blunder. Just terrible. Because of this attack. Oh, man, getting owned by Chesmiz. Yeah. So maybe he could... This won't even help. I could take this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder what he should do against this powerful move, 1, E4. I wonder if E6 is good. So one of the ways he could defend is actually pawn H6. After... after let me go back here. Okay. <laughs> I thought we did like two moves. Okay. So in this position, he could play his pawn up. Now, pawns don't have to follow the restriction, as you can see, it is rook, size, and bishop. So he'd be defending here. And then if I take, well, the king doesn't have to follow the restriction either. So I could take this pawn. Brutal. That's why after e4, e6 is the proper response, because then I can't take that pawn for free. Now, interestingly, I cannot rematch him because he lost so quickly and badly. The website pretty much just assumes he would never want to play me again, which is uh, kind of true. But maybe he does. Let's find out. Put another link in the chat. If you're watching live, you can click that link. Join the game right now. Let's see how it goes. Probably e4, e5, queen h5 resigns, but we'll find out. So there are defenses, I'm thinking, because pawns don't have to follow this restriction. Here's He's back. <laughs> I got the white pieces again. <laughs> I got the white pieces again. So this time, let's do it to it the queen side, okay? He's going to just get owned right over here. <laughs> Watch him resign on move three again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he's watching the stream. He's coming up with these brilliant defenses that I told him about. Okay. Um, so I could move here. See, he can't take me because of the restrictions. Also, knights don't move like that. So let's try this. I mean, how bad could it be? Uh, um, at, at worst, he just, he just moves a pawn again. I should just weasel my way in. <laughs> Right? And like he moves here, then I'm back again. I'm back. And then he's like, hell, and then I'm just like here, and I'm like here, and I like take it strike. I don't know. But what could happen though is that he could start destroying. Yeah, let's try it. He could start destroying me over here. So I think this is a very, very interesting chess variant. And I'm glad we're playing against someone who's also playing the variant. That first opening game was anti. It was anti compared to this. Seriously anti. Okay, so I'm I'm looking forward to checkmate. <laughs> Mm. Try not to spill on yourself, Jesuit. Mm. 
comment in the chat there. L O L W O W. I think that's a letter of love. There's another comment. It says you should actually go over the equation that goes calculates rating at some point. That's quite a comment. I wonder if he could rephrase that in words that obey the laws of English grammar. That would be pretty cool. So I could destroy him here, but meanwhile he'd be destroying me. So is that worth it? There's something called mutual destruction, which is um, well, you kind of probably know what that is right now, and it's a lot of fun. So maybe I should just destroy him. Another possibility is to just take these pawns. Like, it doesn't look like as good as taking all that other garbage, but on the other hand, pawns don't have to follow the restrictions. That makes them super valuable. This is sign language for super valuable. They're, they're super valuable. So I think you want to take those pawns. Now, look, I can check him. And then, see, I can't really checkmate him with just a queen. <laughs> okay, I think that was a bad move, Bisonoff. Like, I, I think there were better moves, such as any move would have been better than that. But luckily for you, we played enough chess moves that I have a rematch button over here. So that's that's pretty good. You're, you're definitely improving. You're definitely improving. So unfortunately for us guys, uh, we have the black pieces. So let's see how bad this gets. Let's see what kind of wreckage we end up with here. So is this just instant win? We'll find out. Oh, he's coming for me. Let's see what happens. I'm going to play the brilliant... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so amused. So maybe I should let, let him wreck the queen side, though, because because meanwhile, I get to wreck the king side. <laughs> I love this chess variant. It's so bad. I love it. Oh, man, what is happening? What? Uh, he can do that, yeah. That's, that's a possible move. So check. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but this is a great chess variant to me. I'm having fun. Chess isn't all about like being smart and making good moves. I used to think that when I play chess, I need to make good moves. Talk about an illusion or maybe a delusion because the true, true meaning of chess is to enjoy chess. Chess doesn't really care if you made good moves or not. Okay, so if I go like this, I could win. But if I play over here, the brilliant h3 would prevent any further damages. So? Oh, no, he's going to come in this way, though. This is interesting. I'm definitely interested right now. I mean, okay, so, so yeah, yeah. No, I can't move anything. <laughs> it's kind of a problem, isn't it? Like, okay, this chess game's pretty good, but I can't move anything. I should have just taken this pawn. Um, I could go, nope, I can't go there, I can't go there. I can't move this bishop at all. I can't move this knight, I can't move any of my things. So that seems to be a somewhat bad, and he's going to take this bishop. h6 was a terrible blunder. Terrible, terrible blunder. Let's try... Oh man, I'm totally stymied. I guess I'll move my queen because it's something I don't have to think about. You can actually move your queen anytime you want in this chess variant. Now, you might think I'm losing right now, but you'd be right if you thought that. This is terrible. We got a comment in the chat. It says, why not queen take c2? That would have been great. Back when his queen wasn't on the c file defending c2, that would have been better than the h6 thing. So, great advice. Queen c4 check is good. No, it is not uh, because queen could take queen. Uh, would have been better when his queen was on a5. Next comment, why can't you play knight e7? Uh, oh, I could play knight e7. Of course. Then <laughs> he would just take this and it would be checkmate. <laughs> uh, because my knight could not move there and I would be a checkmate. So that is a somewhat negative consequence of knight e7. I would actually say supremely negative. But now that I've uh, kind of maneuvered my queen a bit more, I can, I can do the same thing to him. This will be checkmate to him. Don't tell him. But, oh, he's defending. And I can bring on my knight. This is becoming chess. Weird. What if he takes me here, though? No, he's not. Oh, I'm developing all my pieces. This is crazy. Okay. Um, nothing to worry about here. Let's just keep playing chess, I guess. And, um, yeah, d6. Sure, I can play king d7, and then I can bring the rook in. Rooks. They're pretty useless in this variant. I guess. <clears throat> what can we do to win instantly? I'm looking for instant wins here. I could I could try to come in here. He, he could stop that, though. Uh, he wants a queen trade. That's going to give us a serious headache. Oh, I'm not going to trade queens, man. Although, I would if I wanted to. But you see, I've got... Let's give him some time so we can agonize over this. Okay, so here, and then take a bunch more stuff. Yeah, why not this one, though? <laughs> Why not just take all the stuff? Now, I'm only taking rooks, which, as we discussed, are pretty useless pieces. But 
oh, I'll take the rest of the stuff soon. This is making me sneeze. I'm taking so much stuff. Have you ever done that? You're in a chess game. You're like, what? I'm taking so much of your stuff. I'm going to sneeze. Well, that's happening to me right now. Mm. Of course, I'm also having that feeling where you're going to sneeze and you don't. Hmm. Okay. Good use of the knights. Good. I'll just go back here because that activates the rook a little bit. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow, <laughs> this variant is great. <laughs> I mean, how often do you just get checkmate and be like, that was great, I love getting checkmate. That never happens, but here, against Bisonov, which is pretty rare to get checkmated against Bisonov, but when it happens, you're like, that was fantastic, let's do it again. <laughs> Let me tell you, the way I got wrecked that game made me seriously excited. I'm not even going to play my queen out. I'm going to pretend like this is chess. Because think about it. The knights and bishops, if you get your queen middle of the middle of the area like this, you know, then you can actually play, make them valuable. I think this will be pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, he's trying to wreck me, but look at this anti-wreck movement here, where you don't get wrecked. <laughs> that's the that's the the idea behind this technique. It's the don't get wrecked technique. Oh, he wants to trade queens. Uh, that's tempting, isn't it? Because otherwise he'll wreck me, which we've discussed is not very good. I'm actually gonna do this. <laughs> I'm gonna let him take my queen. Oh man, I have to take with pawn. That was close. Okay, now we've got a new kind of position where the king must fight. No problem, my king is well acquainted with fighting. Here he comes, he's gonna have a lot more trouble than I am because his pawns have barely moved, whereas my pawns, they have committed great investment in the art of movement. Ooh, boy, we better block that. If he attacked the knight, I might get stucky, stuckish. <laughs> I was going to play king f2, right? And then it would be stuck. So we've got more comments in the chat. The next one says, oops. Oh, great comment. He's probably talking about last game when I oopsed. Okay, we'll move to the next comment. We'll go back to the English language comment. It says, uh, what it says here in the chat is, if you know what message I was trying to convey is saying, then how it is said doesn't matter in rules of English language. Okay, I can see why I put that off until now because it was quite unpleasant. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? We're going to get into a... I better start trading pawns, otherwise we'll never play chess again. <laughs> we'll just got to move our things until we agree to a draw. It sounds terrible. So that's probably still going to happen, though. I have an idea, though. I have an idea. And my idea which is a good idea, by the way. It's a very good idea. It's to lose a pawn. Okay? He's not falling in the trap. And then, <laughs> and then after I lose a pawn, come on, take the pawn. I'm hoping he pushes, because then I can trade a bishop for two pawns. I would love that. So come on. But if he takes, uh, I'll open up this file. I think this is going to be a draw. Trading queens kind of nerfs the... Uh, Nurse the variant. Hey, shout out to RPVVB. He's challenged me. His name is Pierre Vlad, as you can see here. Uh, maybe you can see. Oh, you can right up there. Pierre Vlad, which is a great name because Pierre is a name and so is Vlad. So he really has twice as many names as the average Vlad has. That's pretty good. We also have a challenger from JG2017 and Aiden488 who is watching live right now. So that's also cool. I'm wrecking wrecking this guy's pawns here with my pawn wrecker. So I'm liking that quite a bit. Legal moves are being made. What an exciting life. How are you guys doing? You know, it, it dawned on me the other day that uh, if it weren't for you, nobody would watch this show. So I really appreciate you watching it. Uh, I don't know how that benefits me, but I feel better. So that's great. Thanks for watching. And then there's something else that I thought, I don't remember everything I think, you know, you know how it is. You think something, and then the next day you're like, what did I think? The what, what was I thinking yesterday? Or maybe it's just like, what was I thinking? It's more like that, actually. That happens to me all the time. Uh, I'm thinking about the hereafters a lot more. The hereafters, you know what that is? It's like when you walk into a room and you're like, what was I hereafter? That happens to me. Those are them hereafters I'm thinking about. So I'm thinking, actually, if this is going nowhere fast, uh, what if I walk back down here so I can get my other rook in the game? 
I'll be right back, buddy. Need to go get my rook. I should go for this file. I don't care what you do. I'm going to get my rook going. I think I'm doing great. Now, we need a plan for getting his king dislodged. Oh, okay, it's 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 relodging itself. It's it's mega lodging. Okay, we need to dislodge it. So I'm thinking bishop like here or here, <laughs> which looks dumb, but that's just because it is. So if I can get my king here, I can put. I need to get my king here. Okay, so I need to get my king here, and then I can put the bishop here, which looks bad. Like okay, a pawn will take your bishop. You're dumb, but actually, that's not the way it is. He can't do anything with his knight. <laughs> he, he literally can't move his knight, except for there, which is literally nowhere. So he literally can't. So because of these rules, in case you're just wandering in, we're playing by these special rules, which is why the chessboard looks so stupid right now. So if I... Ooh. He's thinking of this, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll defend it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm actually going to play bishop b4. I think I'll take advantage of the fact that pawns don't have this restriction in order to break through the center. I, I like this position for me. He's a little bit further on his back foot. It says reconnecting on my screen. Is that good? I don't know. I'm starting to get concerned, though. Concerned that I don't have a facial tissue and I'm allergic to this position. This is problematic. All right, here we go. Wreck the guy in slow mo. Oh, what's he doing? <laughs> oh, we stream because it's so funny. Look, is he gonna come over here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Um, what should I do now? I'm winning by so much. I can bring the rook in somewhere now. Not there though. Not there. Hmm. Uh, okay, he's losing a lot of pieces. I think this is gonna cost him. Uh, this is a nineteen. 39, which, if you're a good chess player, you might think, well, 1939, that's, 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 uh, I don't know, before World War II, coming out of the Great Depression. But if you're, um, if you're a chess player, you know that 1939 is really good, much better than you would expect for someone who loses his rook like that. But to be fair, his, his rook couldn't move. Let's be fair to him because of the rules. He resigns. I don't think I should have won that. Uh, this is an interesting thing. G4 and the pawns sit. I don't know if taking is good. I actually think if he was wise to not push, because trading the bishop for two pawns would be valuable to me. But it's kind of weird that I won this, actually. It feels like he can just hold me back. Uh, he walked away with his king. <laughs> He's like, king f7? Oh, king e7. And meanwhile, I just take all the stuff. So I don't know why his king walked away. I think that kind of made him lose. So we have a challenger from... Um, stream is glitching. Sorry. I was distracted by the stream glitching. We have a challenger. Someone's in the chat saying, please play me. I am Pierre Vlad. Okay, I'll play you. I'll try to play everyone. If you're if you're watching and want to play me, I'm going to try to play you. Challenge me, chesswiz at lichess.org. It's spelled like this. Just think cheesewiz and spell it wrong, and it will say chesswiz on your screen. Okay, stream should be back now. Let's open up the stream stats. It says, frames missed due to rendering lag, 1,000. So I'm sorry you lost 1,000 frames. Uh, oh, oh, let's double check if Pierre Vlad wants to do this. Otherwise, this might be a bad move. Uh, we, this is a chess variant. Do you ever do this? You ever wake up and you're like, okay, I'm starting a chess game, and then you have to say, wait, wait, wait. I have to type this as a chess variant in the box, otherwise I'll lose badly. Pierre Vlad, I am talking to you. Do you does he have his chat off? <laughs> Should I resign now? He's from the country of nowhere. Usually the country shows up here. Like, watch this. My country is the country of Ussa, which is on fire right now. Uh, and this guy's from Ussa also. This person is from Ussa, and this person is an open challenge. Let's cancel that person. Okay, Pierre Vlad is not responding, so we're going to have to 
reboot. <laughs> get it? No, you don't get it. Okay. Uh, we're going to actually abort this guy. Second time he was aborted. If you count the time you didn't notice. We're going to play with JG2017 because he is going to play the chess variant. Fear Vlad is so confused right now. It's probably going to send him back into the chat. So you're like, chess whiz? That game was too short. And it'll be like, but I won. Wait a minute. Like, isn't the point to win? So that was a really good chess game? What? Because the point is to win, and I won, so... That really messes with your mind. So the way I solve that riddle is um, by never winning. Then I don't have to mess with that kind of existential crisis. I'm trying queen g5 this time because queen h4 could be captured by a pawn. Pretty simple logic. But also, I'm excited to come over here and take these things. But meanwhile, I'm also threatening this. So I could come in here and lose my queen. So you see his queen's guarding these squares. So this is uh, different. This is different. He might wreck my king side while I wreck his queen side. It's good. Don't forget about this diagonal, though. Like, if you're taking his rook, you're guarding your rook and vice versa. Aiden wants to play the variant as well. He's in the challenge boat right now. The boat of challenges, so... I'll get to you, Aiden. Very next game, actually, I'll play you. So there's no defense now. Queen a3 is useless against the deadly queen takes knight. If you're just joining confused, these are the rules. Look at this deadly move. These are the rules, and they are brutal. <laughs> I don't know. I guess white just wins, except for when black does this, because this attack is very strong. Law bishop takes a3 was good. Interesting comment. Bishop takes a3, that's the square. Oh. 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 Oh, yeah. It's hard to write the word oh in the chat because that's just like oh. And I don't want to say oh. I want to say oh. Well, what is that like? Oh, uh, because that looks like I'm having an explicit event here in the chat box. So I don't really know how to type oh. If you could help me out with that. Uh, let me know in the comments below the video, because I love your guys' comments. I read them all the time. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, and I'm like, well, what should I do right now, sleep or read the comments on my videos? So yeah, I sleep, because who would do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's take all the stuff here. Or if you're watching live, you can type it in the in the chat box here, because Aiden Jen next is already saying the word no, which is a pretty good word. I use that a lot. And we've also got next to your queen, you could have bishop taken it with the bishop. This is good. This is great. I am loving the community effort here. We have people watching. We have people playing. We even have people talking into a microphone. That would be me. So I think we've pretty well balanced here. We're covering everything. I would like to take the rest of his things. But since I can't do that, maybe I'll offer a queen trade. I don't know. Like queen c6. It's got to be good for me. I'm up at night. Let's do it. And if he doesn't want to trade queens, I gotta wreck him some more and take his rock. <laughs> yeah, he's getting owned. Uh, I think it's just because I, I got the jump on him. You know what I mean? You know what that means? You don't know. Okay, well, that means I started winning very early on. That's code for got the jump. Let's play. d6 seems good. And then we'll king over and bishop out to kind of get everything developed here. We're back to a chess game but with the small twist that I have an extra horse. Horse. All the pros call them horses. If you're calling it a... Look at that. Look at that. If you're calling it a knight, you're doing it wrong. you got to call it a horse. Now, it's not because you think it's a horse. It's because you're making fun of the people who call it a horse. And if you're not making fun of people, what are you doing? Seriously. Um, check. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah nothing's ever gonna happen in this chess game <gasps> never mind checkmate will happen in this chess game let's do that yeah <laughs> oh let's give him some time here so he can suffer a little longer generally speaking the time you want to add time is when the opponent is losing badly that's when you want to add time otherwise do not it can decrease your chance of winning now he is begging me for a queen trade so i'll go for it Bring the king in a little bit here so I can rescue the knight when it gets attacked by a ball. Yeah, otherwise it would have been stranded out there. I'm winning by a pawn and a horse. So that's quite a lot. Should be able to win this. 
I have no idea how to win it. Uh, I think we'll play this next. Never mind. No idea how to win this, but I think it'll happen. Maybe you just don't use any of your things. <laughs> you just, like, okay, trade a, trade a piece for two pawns. That's probably what you do. You don't even need that piece. Yeah. That's what you do. Good. Seems good. Now I have a pass pawn. That's the next step to victory here. Uh, looks like I'm blundering this, but don't worry. Rooks can only move next to his king now, which is like nowhere. <laughs> so I pretty much win this. Uh, this pass pawn will be pretty useful. I'll have to do a lot of work to get the rook in the game. And his rook is in the game. But not really. Like, he can't, you know? So, not too concerning. In fact, nothing can happen here. <laughs> There's an illusion of activity, but it, it's it's only an illusion. Nothing can really happen. I mean, if I can't advance my king oh, into a checkmate, then nothing can happen. But look at this. I can lose more pieces in exchange for more pawns. This is so great because pawns don't have to follow the restrictions. So these pawns are going to be very great. Very great, which means large, by the way. These are going to be very large pawns. Great and terrible pawns. Terrible. Okay, Barman Itan. <laughs> I just got his name. I learned his name, Barmanitan. Uh, his name is typed like this, Barmanitan. Barmanitan is a great person, and by great I mean large. So I've been calling him Barmanitan for a long time, like years. That's a long time, right? I mean, compared to the the length of time that the sun will be burning, it's kind of short, but if you just compare it to your own lifetime... It's also kind of short. So I guess for only a few years, I've been calling him Barmanitan. And then one day, which was last week, I said to him, Barmanitan, why are you named Barmanitan? Which is usually a polite thing to say when you start to get to know someone. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't really have uh, the ability to tell what's polite. So we'll move on from that and talk about Barmanitan. So I asked him that, and he said, well, my name's Atan. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm a barman. So it turns out he's a man made of a bar. He's just a bar. And his name is Itan. So I looked it up, and that's totally a name, just not in the country of Usa. It's in other countries that people are named that. So that's his name, Itan, and he's a barman. So now you know that's pretty cool. You learn something on Chesbus TV. Pretty useless, but that's typical for Chesbus TV to learn something and then find out it's useless. Or the other way around, just learn something that you already knew was useless. It's typically the two ways we do it on this show. This looks like a strong attack. I'll be taking his bishop. Now, unfortunately, I have a queen, which needs a king. Oh, no, queens don't have to follow this rule. This queen is going to wreck the guy. I'll take his rook just to, just to ease his pain. He doesn't have to think about his poor rook anymore. Okay, so queens. <laughs> queens count as these uh, leaders in leadership, royal leadership chess. So I can just do this. GG. If you ever want... Whoops, that's the wrong button. Have you ever tried to click this chat box and accidentally clicked I've got to go? Well, I've done it about 50 times, which is a number. I'm going to I'm gonna enjoy that, GGJG. I'd love to play you again, but I promised to hide in a game. If I have time after all these challengers, which I unfortunately won't, because look, we have more challengers than ever here. Now, Barman Itan actually wants to play. He's off screen. He's so good. Okay, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Who else wants to play Chess Salt? Chesalt, <laughs> that's a good username. His king is upside down, unfortunately. So no, and Iden Jex, that's cool too. That's weird since I'm already playing in Iden 488. <laughs> this is kind of creepy. Okay, I don't want to trade queens. The game would be more boring if we do that. I kind of want to do this, actually, because this is so defensive. Then we're playing chess. This is chess, guys. Look at this. This is, this is a great variant, and by that I mean large, because in this variant, you can play chess if you really want to. Look at that. Okay, what I want to do is trade a bishop for this pawn. Wait, I could just take that. No, I can't. I want to trade a piece for two pawns. I think that's pretty good. Don't see how to do that. Uh, this is an idea. 
<laughs> so I get down here. Whoops, don't pre-move that. And then, and then take this. That's my idea. Now, unfortunately, as soon as I do, he wrecks this side of the board. So maybe I shouldn't. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. Okay, so this is this is pretty strong. Oh, his queen's also defending here. Fine, I'm back to chess. Oh. Oh. It's going to happen. <laughs> Don't make a gif out of that. Now you know why you should make a gif out of that. Because there's no such thing as a gif. It's a gif. That's why. This looks strong. <coughs> oh. I blame Liberia. This is strong. This is strong. Look at this. Oh, yeah. This is gonna be bad for Aiden. Finally got in here. I think the commentary's over. I think at this point we're just taking stuff. <laughs> we're just gonna capture stuff at this point. It's like, doesn't even matter what I say. It's not gonna change the fact that his entire queen side is gonna turn to nothingness. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, pretty bad for you. Take that. Can't take that. It's queen, you know. How could I capitalize on this? Let's take more stuff. <laughs> uh, check here. I come over here, then I could bring the bishop this way. Oh, he's trying to do it to me. No, you don't. There's only one tired destroyer in this house, and it's me. I'll, I'll take with bishop. Seems good. Hmm. Oh, I hope he doesn't notice. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he didn't notice. This is called the Hoping Gambit, also known as a blunder. So he could have taken Queen takes Queen, of course. Uh, but he didn't notice that, so I took a screen trophy. Good game. I would love to play you again, but I have a challenge from a different Aiden. Aiden Jax. Now, is that weird? Is this a living in a real reality, or is this a, a reality created by a bunch of Aidens? I don't even know for sure. Let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. Um, let me, let me, I wrote it down. So let me read it to you. Okay. Oh, one sec. I gotta pull this up here. Iden Jack's getting wrecked, so it's a common thing on this episode. Everyone's getting wrecked in this episode. Okay. So this is what happened to me yesterday. You can tell me if you would have done what I did. <clears throat> it was a tough choice. So yesterday I woke up in a plain white room. I was seated in a reclining chair with a steel contraption on my head. A woman in a white coat was standing over me. The year is 2659, she explained. The life with which you are familiar is an experienced machine program selected by you some 40 years ago. We at IEM interrupt. We at IEM. <laughs> uh, it's hard to read your own writing. We at IEM interrupt our clients' programs at 10-year intervals to ensure client satisfaction. Our records indicate that your three previous interruptions, you deemed your program satisfactory and chose to continue. This is an experience program, apparently. As before, if you choose to continue with your program, you will return to your life as you know it with no recollection of this interruption. Your friends, loved ones, and projects will all be there. Of course, you may choose to terminate your program at this point if you are unsatisfied for any reason. scary that's the move oh king over is probably the move this is interesting so he takes that i take this so he's threatening checkmate <laughs> i can't think about the uh, experience program right now because he's threatening checkmate it's actually somewhat problematic how to prevent it i guess i could let's take this first and then i could come out this way hmm yeah, I guess we'll play this. Do you intend to continue with your program? So <clears throat> I did. I went ahead with the experience program, which is why I'm here having this experience with you. Even though the year is actually 2659, 
Uh, but it, it, it was a difficult question, you know, should I live in, in a fake reality and have chess with TV or should I experience the true reality, which doesn't have any chess with TV in it? And obviously I, I went with fake because it's the superior reality. But it was it was a tough job. Oh, 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 oops. Let's see if he wants to give me a take back there. He does. Because uh, a pawn could take that. So you can't always be so impudent. Impudence is a conditional state, which is another way to say you can't always be so impudent. Okay, I'm blundering my knight. I should probably have checked him here. Protected my knight a little bit more. Yeah, that would have been good. But if he takes me, I could play here which covers this diagonal very well and threatens the bishop. Hmm. It's a very weird phrasing, that what I just read to you. The, the idea that you woke up and you can return to the fake reality. Because usually that kind of thought experiment is proposed, uh, I'm just going to take everything over here, where you can have a fake reality, would you like one? And then most people are like, no, a fake reality seems somehow unsatisfactory to me. I would rather have the true miserable reality than a fake pleasant reality. This, uh, this idea is explored in the movie The Matrix, which is a pretty good documentary, I think. Anyway, uh, but when it's reversed around, where it turns out that you were in the fake all along, and you're like, do you want to return to the fake? Suddenly, it's a more difficult question, because of something called the status quo bias, which means whatever the way things are, that's the way you want to keep them. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> no, you haven't, because you don't pay attention. But, but oh no, it's checkmate! I've just noticed something really bad. I can't do the captures because they're not near my king or queen. Wow, nice. Iden Jex 101. I think I played worse when I was thinking about fake realities. I want to play you again. There's more to this game than just taking stuff, I think. I think there's something more. You have to defend your position on occasion. So status quo bias says that you would rather keep the way things are than change them. Uh, generally, more more favorable to that. Like, let's say you're invested in this mediocre investment, like, uh, 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 for example, ExxonMobil, definitely a mediocre investment right now. Ooh, pretty cool move. Um, and the question is, should you switch your investment to Tesla, which is up 100% over the past year? He resigns. That was, uh, send him a question mark for that one, actually. Just turn that upside down, literally. Hey, well, let me send that. Send three of them. There we go. He wants to be black, I guess. I don't know. Well, Tesla, that's a pretty bad investment right now because it's way overpriced, but uh, let's just say, let's just say it were a good investment. Because you're already in one, you, you, you don't want to switch and then that turn out to be bad, right? Because then you blame yourself for switching. But if you don't do anything, the inaction of doing nothing and then it turns out to be bad, that's not really your fault. I mean, you didn't do anything. So people prefer not to take action because then there's a risk of of taking the wrong action. They prefer to do nothing and then have turn out to be a terrible mistake that they feel okay about because they didn't do anything. So that's just the way things are. So the reversing the uh, reversing the experience machine there. <laughs> okay, Iden. Okay, Jax. You got you got something you got something inferior about that move. Nice. It's not so good. It's really interesting. I I would challenge you to answer what you think you would do if you woke up and discovered you were in a fake reality. Would you want to go back to it? Or would you want to never see your loved ones again? The fake loved ones that you've formed an artificial bond with in your mind? It's an interesting question. I don't know exactly what I would do. <laughs> I would probably think that I was dreaming and that the questioner wasn't the real thing. Which is actually probably what would be happening. Probably, but you just never know. It's weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Barman Iten, I am so bad all of a sudden. <laughs> Send him a smiley face. I still like you. In fact, I like you more now. Of course, I actually said Z like you more now, which is uh, a nice way to get out of the... <laughs> if he ever says, but you liked me, I'll be like, no. Z liked you. Then I'll be off the hook, so to speak. Won't have to ever own up to the fact for having liked whoever that was. We are now playing against Barman Iten himself. He says the first episode he ever watched was 405. This being episode 504, this is his 99th episode. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Barman, are you going to make any chess moves or are you just going to gloat about how much you've watched? 
how much of your life you've wasted watching chess with tv each episode is 30 to 60 minutes 30 at a minimum so that is 100 times 0.5 equals 50 hours and now if you made a measly 10 dollars per hour which is a quantity of dollars attainable by many people then that would have cost you 500 dollars. that can't be right <laughs> is that all you spent 500 dollars watching chess with tv that's a good deal this show is worth 500 dollars right? Hmm. Yeah, it is. Definitely. This is very interesting. He's defending his own rook while attacking my rook in a rookish sort of way. I think I'll play the knight here. Because watch this. Watch this move. I'm going to take this pawn, defending my pawn, and threatening this pawn. So this is pretty good. <clears throat> okay. We're done wrecking the king's side. Perhaps we should go wreck the queen side next. Whoa. Time to wreck him. He's preparing some kind of checkmate here where he uses two pieces. Only the pros use two pieces at the same time. You know, beginners, what they do is they just get out there with the queen, which this episode is perfect for that. Uh, but, but what the pros do is they actually use a second piece with the queen to checkmate you. It's pretty good. Oh, man, I wanted you to block so I could just checkmate. This would be checkmate. Draw more arrows till I win. Hmm. 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 Let's play something pretty anticlimactic here. <laughs> like defend this, I guess. Oh. oh. Can't do that. Better not do that. Cool. Cool move, bro. That was cool. And it was a move. Now you're pinned, though. It's pretty risky for you. I mean, you can't move the rook <laughs> off with the queen. Okay, so, and moving the queen is pretty risky, too. So, I don't know. All that for a pawn. I mean, what'd you take? A pawn? You want to tie yourself up after for a pawn? 405. HTTP 405. Method not allowed. That's why I like you guys, you know. You know the HTTP codes for everything. You know what 504 is? Episode 504? HTTP via 504? Um, it's, uh, it's a server error, of course. I don't know what it is. Let's look it up. It's a gateway timeout. <laughs> now you know, okay? So that's great. I'm glad you've learned that. HTTP 504 gateway timeout. That's what we should have called this episode. And then we could, like, have a variant that's all about gateways timing out. That would be so fun. <laughs> Wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, after I castle, then I can take his rock. Certain doom. Oh, he lost his queen. <laughs> oh, you can't take my queen. You. I'll just type you at the end and at the start. Like twice as many U's. So I'm going to give him some take backs. Here. Not a problem. Let's go back. Another move. Winking face. <laughs> Winking face. Because as you can see, he can't move his rook, so he's actually totally screwed. What he should do is just run away with the queen and forget the rook ever existed. Because after I castle, I'm going to take that rook. He really can't save it. Okay. Look. <laughs> you better just lose that rook while you still can. This variant is great. It's like beginner's chess variant. Because beginners will do that. Whoa. This guy's way too good for me. Oh. <laughs> I can't stand it. The moves are too good. I can't take this. I can't take this. <laughs> Stop with the brilliancies. They're too much. What are you going to take next? No. No. You're too brilliant. Help. I'll just blunder my stuff. Oh. My blunder's illegal. Okay. Fine. I, I... He's so good. He's so good. Help. I've never played someone this good. Look, the 1357 is showing us up. You know what's good about this rating? It's all the odd numbers ascending. 1357. This is actually a 2100 plus guy. 
That's his actual chest strength, but he's trying to get his rating to be the perfect rating, 1357. And that is why he has that rating, because, of course, if he wants it, his rating to be perfect, it's going to be perfect. It's pretty hard to have any other outcome with a guy like this. Okay, that was an interesting move. Thanks for the... Okay, good luck surviving this attack. <laughs> this variant is so great. Boom. <laughs> you can't take me because of light chess. Sorry. Evil, he says. Actually, he's saying live because everything's backwards for him. And live backwards. Li evil spelled backwards is live, so that's what he's saying. Of course. Okay, so now it's a pretty close game here. We each have a rook, knight, and a queen. Oh, he's defending everything. Oh. What's going to happen? I should use my pawns, don't you think? Like, if I had pawns here, here, and here, and here, I would checkmate him. So that's what I should go for. This seems fine. He can't take me. Then I can check him here or here. Is it an advantage that his that his king is in front like this? I don't think so. I can't move the bishop like this. Oh, now I can go here. Can't take that. This might be a thing. I'm so confused. <laughs> that move, I think. Wow. I'm starting to play really good moves. This is weird. This never happens. Must be a long episode because usually we quit before I start making good moves. Oh, man. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to trade. I don't want to not trade. He's going to checkmate me. Um, okay. It's a bishop against a pawn. In chess, this is great for the bishop. In this variant... Let's find out. I'm ready for you. Bring it on. We're the final fight. All the challenges have gone, right? No challenges are currently being challenged. <laughs> That's what challenges do, right? None. Because right now, it's all about the pawn versus pawn and bishop. End game here. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. Oh, this is exciting. Um... Push. I think I want to push. I want to keep some pawns on the board. But taking is good, too. I think I want to take. I'm going to push. More pawns on the board is better. Because that allows me to promote more pawns since I'm winning. Let's go here. Here. Yeah, I mean, an extra bishop is pretty sweet. <laughs> I think I'm winning. I'm even not cheating right now. It's fantastic. Yeah, now I don't even need the bishop. Look at that. I win. Weird. Bishop is better than a pawn. Wow. What a strange thing that a bishop would be better than a pawn. A queen is extremely good in this chess variant. I will zig over to him here. Zigging. Currently zigging. I don't know why he's still playing. A good trick if you need to do something fast in a fast game like this is to put the queen in front of the queening square. Just put the queen right on top there because then he can't take it. He can't get close to it. He can't do nothing except uh, lose. So this is a great technique when you're low on time or you just need something simple. It's just switch your queen right on the queening square. Then you can pre-move whatever and you're going to be perfectly fine. So I think I can probably win this game. Let's put the bishop out of the way in a legal way and then... Then we'll win. Hope you liked the episode. If you have any chess variant ideas, feel free to post them below the video. I would love to read your ideas. Next episode, we're going to play something even crazier than this. I think. Um, I don't remember what we're playing, so let's bring that up. All you have to do is go to chesswiz.tv. Very difficult to spell, so it's hard to find out what we're playing next. But we're going to play a chess variant where knights confer remarkable, remarkable invincibility. And who is that? I have no idea. This has been Chesswiz TV. Thanks for watching.